So in the last video when I talked about the eight steps of the TCA cycle, I mentioned that there were four enzymes, including the one from the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, that um, are allosterically regulated. So I want to talk about what allosterically regulates them. What are their effectors? So the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex um, is has three different allosteric inhibitors. The first one being uh, lots of ATP. So if there's lots of ATP around, that's going to inhibit the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Well, why would that make sense? Well, lots of ATP indicates a high indicates a high energy, right? So the TCA cycle and the pyruvate dehyd well the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex makes an acetyl CoA, which will go through the TCA cycle. Right, and the purpose of that is to make a bunch of NADHs and FADH2s that will later go on to give us a lot of energy, or a lot of ATP through the electron transport chain. So, if we already have lots of energy, we don't need to be creating more. So, it makes sense that ATP will inhibit the, the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and therefore the TCA cycle. Okay, now. High levels of acetyl-CoA also inhibit the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Well, why would that make sense? The first and foremost, the highest acetyl-CoA is the product, right? It's the product of this reaction. So it's a product, or it's the product. So it'll feed back negatively, so negative feedback or feedback inhibition, right? There's no sense in creating more, right? Um, if there's a bunch of acetyl-CoA, what could that really mean? What this also means, so first of all, it's the product, so that's one reason. The second reason is that if there's a bunch of acetyl-CoA, what, what does that indicate? What does that mean? That probably means that the TCA cycle, right, or the Krebs cycle, whatever you want to call it, is not going all the way through, right? If there's a buildup of acetyl-CoA's, these acetyl-CoA's are supposed to go through the TCA cycle. If they're not going, that could mean the TCA cycle is not working. So um, there's this this that basically means that the TCA cycle or the Krebs cycle is backed up. Okay, it's not using up acetyl CoA's. So don't make more. Do not make more. Cool. Now, high NADH, why would that um, inhibit pyruvate dehydrogenase complex? Well, of course, like also, it's a product of the reaction as well, right? Uh, this dehydrogenase step does make a, an NADH, so it is a product, okay? So um, it's a product, that's one reason. The second reason um, is that what does high levels of NADH indicate? If there's a bunch of NADHs around, they're not being reoxidized back into NAD+. If they're not being reoxidized back into NAD+, that probably means that the electron transport chain is backed up, which is abbreviated as ETC. The electron transport chain is backed up. Okay, so NADH is not being reoxidized back into NAD pluses, right? So you don't want to make more if you can't reoxidize them. Okay. So that's it for pyruvate dehydrogenase. Now, what about citrate synthase? Well, we'll notice that the first two allosteric inhibitors are just high ATP and high NADH. Those are essentially the the, the, way, the reason why they're allosteric effectors is it's really the same same idea, same as the above. So I don't want to write that over again. Um, that's essentially like they they are inhibitors for the same reason that these in, that a high ATP and high NADH inhibit the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. One thing I do want to note is that the citrate synthase is basically the first committed step. It's the first 
um, step of the pathway. So we want to make sure that this is only occurring if we really need it, or if we only want to commit to this pathway. So high succinyl CoA, high levels of succinyl CoA inhibit this this uh, enzyme from um, from being active. Right. So why would that why would that be the case? Well, if there's a buildup of succinyl CoA, that must mean that um, succinyl CoA is not going on further in like in in the TCA cycle. If it's not being converted right into succinate, then um, that could indicate that the, the the Krebs cycle is not going to completion, right? So this again, this is the whole idea that the Krebs cycle is backed up. I, I keep using Krebs and TCA inter interchangeably, so forgive me if that's at all confusing. They're the same thing. Um, the high levels of succinyl CoA indicate that the Krebs cycle is backed up, so we we don't want to keep con don't want to you know commit to the pathway if it's backed up, right? What about high levels of citrate? Um, if there's a bunch of citrate, that could also indicate that the Krebs cycle is backed up. If citrate is not moving on further, then Krebs, the Krebs cycle is also is probably backed up. So in, in addition, citrate is also the the product. Okay, so. First and foremost, citrate is a product of that reaction, and two, um, this also indicates that the Krebs cycle is backed up because that citrate is not being converted over. Okay, scroll up a little bit, scroll down. Okay, so isocitrate dehydrogenase it also is inhibited by high levels of ATP and high levels of NADHs. For the very same reason as these were, and and you know the PDH before it, um, they they indicate high energy levels and backup of the ETC, so you don't want to keep making more of those things. However, this thing has activators, high um, amounts of ADP and high amounts of NAD+. What does high amounts of ADP indicate? Well, if high amounts of ATP indicated high energy, high amounts of ADP means that the ATPs have been used up. So this this is an indicator. This indicates low energy, right? So if we have a low energy, do we want to activate the Krebs cycle so that we can make more? So make more. It makes sense then that this would be an activator of the process. What about NAD plus? Um, essentially, it's also it also does that. It also indicates low energy, right? Um, and essentially, if there's a bunch of NAD pluses around, they're basically waiting to be reduced to NADH. Right, they're waiting to be reduced to NADH to be sent to the electron transport chain to make energy. Right, in the form of ATP. Okay. That's it for, that's it for isocitrate dehydrogenase. Alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex it has three allosteric effectors, all of them inhibitors. And we've seen all three of these inhibitors before. They're, these three inhibitors are also inhibitors of citrate synthase. So same idea there. Uh, they're inhibitors for the same reason. That's basically it. What I wanted to notice, in, or what I wanted to note in addition, is that just because something necessarily makes sense that it would be an allosteric effector, or an allosteric inhibitor, or an activator, doesn't mean that it will be. Right. So for isocitrate dehydrogenase, it it's not allosterically inhibited by high levels of succinyl CoA. It would make sense that if it was, but for whatever reason, it isn't. Okay. So I wanted to just point that idea out: is that just because something could make, potentially make sense as um, you know to to be uh, an allosteric effector doesn't necessarily mean that it will be one. Okay. I just wanted to point that out. Hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.